that's so distracting. <laughs> right, hello, it's Plant Life Forever 69 and today I thought I'd do something a little bit different and uh, give you a tour of all of my plants. So I've got 30 plus house plants of my own and my housemate has quite a big collection of plants as well. So um, I won't give you information about his but I will give you a little look at them and yeah. So without further ado, let's jump into the video and I'll talk a lot as usual. So this is the carnivorous plant window sill. They all seem to be doing pretty well. I have got a new one in the corner there. I'll probably do a separate plant update but as you can see we have got about 15,000 spiders that have moved in to my flat, specifically this windowsill. I don't know if you can see the culprit up there himself, but he has managed to escape <laughs> certain death. So um, I'm inclined to just leave him there really and see if he ever becomes food for any of these plants. The first plant that I wanted to show you is this sensitive plant here that I nearly killed. The technical name for this plant is a Mimosa pudica. So it is called a sensitive plant because if you just touch the leaves, you can see that they curl in. Basically it does this as a mechanism for defense. So any kind of predator tries to eat it, it will be alarmed by it closing up suddenly. And also it makes it look dead, so it actually closes its leaves at night and reopens them in the morning. It's just pretty cool to be honest. They do actually like a lot of sun, just um, I didn't let it adapt to the sun. And then after it got some sun damage I let it dry out too much. And that's when this happened. <laughs> so. Take note that do not let these dry out because it really doesn't take very long. It was only like two days that it was too dry for and um, it was quite a catastrophic effect that one had. So yeah, that's the sensitive plant. This is a northeast facing windowsill and on this windowsill I've got the OG. This is Phyllis. This nice big philodendron Brazil that I've had for over a year and it's just given me non-stop babies. I'm so sorry my room is such a mess, it always is, but I've made quite a few propagations from this plant and I let her get super dry. Yeah, I basically wait till she's wilting before I water her. She really doesn't mind drying out. It's recommended you don't let them dry out. It is probably better for the plant if you don't, but I've not seen any adverse effects. It never stops growing. I fertilise it all year round, just with like quarter strength fertiliser. Every other time I water it, sometimes I go longer in between. I don't like the term beginner plants, but this was my beginner plant. And I do think that it's like the hardest one to kill, whether you're an overwaterer or an underwaterer. This plant will probably never die. It's going to outlive you. This here is my grass. I've never actually found out what this plant is. It's just some kind of moss or grass. Grown pretty prolifically for me, especially in the summer months. It's kind of done really well. You can see where we had a period where I let it get a bit dry and it got crispy. It also really doesn't like any um, direct sunlight at all. Definitely a medium light plant, isn't too fussed about getting bright in direct light. But I did notice that if you put it in brighter light, then you start to get these nice little buds on there. And over here, this is a trade scanthia plant that I rescued from my office. Um, I'll put in a picture of what it did look like. I cut it all back because it did have long tendrils like this. I cut most of them off. I recommend you never cut a plant back more than 70% at one time. So that's why I kept this one little bit here. So it actually had something to photosynthesize with. I did put some of the cuttings straight back in the soil. 
and then I also took some more cuttings and put them in this little jar here and as you can see it's grown some pretty nice roots and it's been in there for about a month now so it's come on really well behind that this is a peperomia piccola banda this is one of my least favorite plants to be honest this is a pilea guauca i love this plant this is one of my favorite plants it's got a nice kind of silvery colored leaves really gorgeous doesn't like any direct sun it's got quite thin delicate leaves so plants like that you tend to want to keep out of direct sunlight because uh, they don't take it too well but it's beautiful and I love it it feels so springy and nice you can tell when it needs a drink because it will look like shit <laughs> to put it bluntly um, and if you like touch it give it a little squidge then you'll probably get a lot of leaves drop off when it's thirsty. This is my Skindaptis Pictus. I'm not sure if it's Exotica or whatever, don't really care to be honest. It's just pretty and it's giving me nice, lots of nice silvery leaves. There's a theme coming here that I really like silvery plants, just think they're beautiful. You'll know when to water this plant because the leaves will sort of curl they'll like fold over there's no real example here because it doesn't really need a drink but they'll start to look more like this kind of curled and i find that this plant is pretty drought resistant but within limits so that's the skindaptis pictus here this was labeled in the shop as a monstera leclini which I've never heard of before, but to me it looks like Monstera adinsonii round form. It's just gorgeous. Like I think this is its newest leaf here. It's pretty good size, not as big as this big leaf here. It's bigger than my hand, but it will keep growing. If you see um little water droplets on Monstera. It's a process called gestation, which is just them processing the water that's, you know, they're drinking and they're letting it out through the leaves. So it's totally normal. It doesn't mean you've overwatered your plant. So don't worry if you do see that. This is my zebra plant. Aphalandra squirosa is the technical name for it. Some nice new growth in the top there. I'm not sure this one gets enough light because I think as tropical plants go it does actually like a bit more light than others typically do. I'm not sure what's going on with these leaves, I literally watered it a couple of days ago but they're really floppy and probably dying. That's okay though because the rest of it looks pretty nice. Um, here, this little one. This is a mini Phyllis. It's only been in soil for about two weeks, but it's already started to grow some new leaves. So it's settled in really well. I've got a couple of new leaves growing. This is my child. This is my beautiful, beautiful Begonia maculata whitei. It's gorgeous because the backs of the leaves are this beautiful, stunning, deep red colour, contrasted with this forest dark green and gorgeous silver spots. It's just, it's another like dinosaur plant. I swear I just love Jurassic looking plants. So this is a new leaf, this is a new leaf. This was a leaf that just opened when I got it. It's just starting to turn that gorgeous dark green colour and get that red on the back. And the new leaves are this sort of more pale green and the back isn't quite as rosy yet. I love the angel wing shape. It's just gorgeous. They don't like to be in direct light whatsoever. They will die. Uh, they like to be kept moist at all times. I give mine distilled water. 
I don't give all my plants distilled water because that's expensive. If you give it too much light, it will let you know because the leaves will not turn the dark green colour. They'll be more light coloured and yeah, it will be quite obvious when your plant needs attention. So that's my child, my Begonia maculata whitey eye. This here is another rescue plant. It's a Calathea that was in my parents' kitchen. I brought it home because the soil was like Play-Doh and Calathea need really aerated soil, otherwise uh, they get root rot really easily. Calatheas are the devil of the plant world in my opinion. They basically look at them wrong and they die, you know, but so far I've not killed one yet. Fingers crossed that I don't kill any of them. When I brought it home, I repotted it, watered it with distilled water because these plants are really sensitive to minerals and stuff. Be careful when you fertilise them as well. I made sure I put loads of rocks and stuff in the soil so it had drainage and it was aerated. So you're preventing root rot. But immediately this new leaf here curled up. So I thought, hmm, I'll leave it for like two weeks. See if it settles in. Didn't uncurl. So um, what I've done is I've just taken it out of the soil washed off the soil from the roots and I've just stuck it in some distilled water and it is slowly uncurling. It's been in there for like four days. This is a Calathea that I can't remember the name of but it's gorgeous. I cut off a lot of the leaves when I got it because they were all sort of like this. I believe that's overwatering. I think it was severely overwatered because I've had this for like three weeks, two or three weeks, and the soil is only just dry. Oh, 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 come through the jungle. Yeah, the soil is only just dry on the surface. If you stick your finger in, it's wet. So I'm not watering this guy until it is you know, dry enough, so that might be another week or so, but lots of new leaves. Got one there, got one there. That's my unknown Calathea that I've actually fallen in love with and is one of my favourite plants, so I'm sorry about what I said about Calatheas not being beginner plants in my previous videos. Um, I've changed my mind. I do know that they are really sensitive to sun and literally everything, but if you can if you can handle their sensitivities then they're really really beautiful plants this is the landing where i've got some of my more sun loving plants or what are supposed to be sun loving plants um most of these i've had for about a year some of them i've only had for 6 months but here is my string of hearts or chain of hearts I recently fertilised this and gave it a good clean because I did notice some mealybugs on there. Thankfully they're not too hard to get rid of. See this one does have an actual flower on it there. So beautiful. You'll find these little lumpy bits like this. These are called tubers and they're actually if you look in the top, you can see some of them get really big and you can actually plant these and they'll grow roots. So that's how I propagated it. You can do it in water, but I wouldn't recommend it for these plants. Just put them straight into the soil that you want them to grow in and they will burst into life, as you can see. This is a Kalanchoe. I did notice this morning you can see some white little bugs there. Those are mealy bugs. You see those disgusting things there. So that's one of my jobs for today. It was flowering, but it's not now. Probably because we've had a lot less sun recently. Um, but it was loving life. We have got nice leaves on it though. So <laughs> there's one good thing going for this, but I will have to sort out those mealies. Oh, this is a cactus. 
that's all you get to understand for that part. I don't know what cactus it is, um, I just know that it's in a cute pot. It was in this terrarium, I moved it because, yeah, it shouldn't have been in there. So actually, this is my OG plant because I've had this plant for nearly three years. He's nearly died so many times. I'm actually terrible at looking after succulents. The majority of plants that I've killed have been succulents. They don't really like direct sun that much, especially Mr. Squish. He doesn't. You can see he is sunburnt right now. If you see, um, this is a gaster aloe, by the way. If you see that your gaster aloe is like brown, he's sunburnt and he's in too harsh sun. So just move him out the window don't do what I do and just keep him there and tell him to suck it up. But saying that, he never dies. He's always growing in the middle. And I noticed this morning, he's got babies. You can see in the base there, there's a small gastorallo bubble. Some more there. He's been completely brown before and come back to life even better and I'll put in a little picture so you can see just how much he's grown over the years that I've had him. Now for the one remaining plant in my terrarium uh, is a yucca. It's um, a variegated one. I don't, I'm not sure if you can really see the sort of white and pink tones in the leaves. It's not grown too much. I do give him distilled water because if you don't, you'll probably get brown tips. We've also got um, an intruder. Don't know what that is, but it's not supposed to be in there. Oh well. So, I know I said that I was going to show you all of my plants and all of my housemates' plants but there's actually loads and the video is already like 20 minutes long so I'm going to leave it here but you can expect some more videos on some plant care and general plant updates in the future so thank you so much for watching the video guys hope to see you in the next one enjoy your day goodbye